Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community, where we explore all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we will look at the top AV processor separates for under $5,000, which support immersive audio formats for at least 12 channels. This video complements our AV Processor Buyer's Guide uh, 2020 Part 1 through 10 series, where we explored 3 through 32 channel processor models. If you miss that previous series of videos for the AV Processor's Buyer's Guide 2020, I have provided the links for your convenience in the description. This video will be the first part of this series. Now the main drive for researching AV processors is that RipeWave Audio is looking to purchase one soon. And we believe that immersive audio is mature enough to jump in at this time. We also are uh, presenting this information to assist those who are also in the market for an immersive AV processor separate. While your criteria may be different, perhaps our methodology will give you insight on how to narrow down your choices. Our buyer's guide identified AV processors in excess of $20,000. Now for this video series, and as a general criteria for our own system, we are going to first set the spending limit at $5,000 to see if we can find a model that meets our need for channels, features, and sound quality. Now our preference is for a processor separate versus a receiver as we already have an investment in amplifiers due to our demanding inefficient Polk LSI speakers. As such, we are uh, trading the onboard amplifications rece receivers provide for higher quality components and build quality usually associated with separates. RipeWave Audio's goal is to move from a 5.0 system to a 7.2.4 system. Now we can envision expanding in a future phase to 9.4.6 systems and beyond. Therefore, whatever processor we select, we will want to support a minimum of 12 channels. Now as we prefer dual independent subwoofer control, a better processing minimum for us is probably 13 channels. If the processor can also support even larger configurations for a future phase, that would be a plus. Finally, we give preference to newer models, or at least models that support the latest technology to better ensure a longer service life. Therefore, the discontinuation closeout deals we normally take advantage of won't apply, and we will exclude those models from our search. Let's take a look at the pool. We are using the RipeWave Audio database to narrow down our choices. This database contains data from 26 brands, Arcuus, Anthem, Arcam, Audio Control, Bryston, Datasat, Denon, Emotiva, Focal, Integra, JBL Synthesis, Lexicon, Lingdorf, Marantz, Macintosh, Monoprice, NAD, Onkyo, Outlaw, Pioneer, Rotel, Sony, Storm Audio, uh, Theta Digital, Trinoff, and Yamaha. With a total of 141 models, which represent the full spectrum of AV processors for broad range of customer needs. Now to make this easier, we will filter down that data to a more manageable list. The first filter we will apply is to remove receivers, processes with internal amplification. Now, as you can see, after that filter it was applied, we eliminated some of the most popular brands and a large quantity of the lower cost models where receivers dominate. Well-known consumer brands Denon, Onkyo, Pioneer, Integra, and Sony uh, don't offer uh, processor separates. While I have been loyal to Sony in the past, their focus on mass-marketed products has caused them to vacate the processor-separate market. 
since the discontinuation of the TAE 9000 ES uh, nearly two decades ago, which RipeWave Audio still has in service today. Now it is time to move on to a brand that is committed to premium separates. With this filter, we eliminate over two thirds of the models. The next filter, we remove the non-immersive models. Those without any support for Atmos, DTSX, DTSX Pro, Oral 3D, or DTS-based IMAX Enhance. With this, we only reduce the pool by two. Outlaw Audio's model 796 and Emotiva's MC700 are the only processor separates today that limit support to the classic 7.1 Dolby Digital and DTS decoding. While those serve an important niche for those who want a high quality 7.1 solution, our aim is to experience immersive audio. With the available choices still high at 44 models or 31%, we will again apply another filter. This time, we eliminate models that cost more than $5,000 and, as a result, lowers the model count to 15 and brands to 9. It is interesting that we now are at the point where there are more AV processors that are over $5,000 than under. Perhaps this suggests that we have set the bar too low but we remain optimistic that we can find not just an acceptable solution, but an impressive one. Now that is not to say that more expensive models don't have their merits. They do. It just means that you don't need to have the best to put together something that will impress both you and your friends. Brands eliminated by the cost criteria include what RipeWave Audio labels as home cinema class processors from Datasat, JBL Synthesis, Storm Audio, and Trinoff, which are considered to be part of many enthusiasts' dream systems. Others eliminated by costs fell in between the top home cinema class and the most widely obtainable sub $5,000 group and serve as a level up for those not willing to cross the $10,000 threshold. Before we start, we have one more filter to apply to remove any discontinued models from consideration. That final filter drops uh, the recently discontinued products from Anthem and Marantz ranges for a candidate list which includes 13 models from the following nine brands. Anthem, Arcam, Emotiva, Lexicon, Marantz, Macintosh, Rotel, and Yamaha. With more than 90% of the field set aside, our job to find a new processor for our main theater becomes much easier to manage. Of course, if we find we need something more than what is on this list, we may need to raise the spending limit up a few thousand dollars, but we're not ready to concede at this point. We feel that the most important criteria when selecting an AV processor is to get the channel count right. We know our short-term goal is to move to 7.2.4. Dual subwoofer control could be manually controlled uh, at the subwoofer with a 12-channel ch processor, but to have the ability to adjust the levels centrally with the processor would be much better. So, 13-channel support would be preferred. We're also displaying the speaker layout uh, for five ear level speakers. Now, with a five-speaker count at ear level, the upper channel capability outnumbers that of the base plane. If your room is more suited to a 5-channel base, then the 12-13 channel models are likely to be enough and provide some room for expansion 
above, or behind you. The RipeWave Audio Theater Room is about 25 feet long, so we feel a 7-channel ear-level bass is needed. And we could even accommodate front wide speakers in the future. With a long room, we have the ability to keep adding more channels above in the ceiling. While we will start with four ceiling speakers, we could grow to as many as 10. Now, we are not certain that there will be a noticeable difference uh, past eight or even six channels in the ceiling. With this potential growth in mind, we look also at nine channel ear level layouts, which could extend the processing needs to 17 channels or beyond. The second most important criteria is format support. Dolby Atmos and DTS-X are must-have formats for us. If we are to support more than 13 channels, we need to be aware that the standard DTS decoding has an 11.1 .1 limit, which equates to 12 or 13 channel processor. Moving past 13 channels means that we want to pair with a processor that also supports DTSX Pro. It would be odd to have an, an Atmos movie uh, fully leveraging the speakers while DTSX movies are not firing on all cylinders. Given the limited content with Oral 3D and uh, mixed reviews for the Oral 3D upmixer, that format's only a nice to have. RipeWave Audio feels stronger about IMAX Enhance and Dolby Vision support, but not having support uh, may not be a de deal breaker as we don't have a compatible TV at this time. Support for these, along with 8K features, would make us IMAX, Dolby Vision, and 8K ready if we decide to upgrade our TV. Here are the models which we will explain from the most to least exp expensive. There is no model uh, older than three years old, and prices range from $2,400 for the Rotel RSP 1576 to the recently launched $5,000 Macintosh MX100. As both of these are 12 channel models, the pricing appears to be more related to brand and quality than channel count in this grouping. While the MX100 is Macintosh's entry-level model, seven of the 13 models are flagship processors and represent the best their respective brands have to offer. The Arcam AV40 Monoprice HTP1 Lexicon MC10 and Yamaha CX A520 are the only AV processor separates those brands produce as noted by the asterisk. While we are focused on the top models of each brand for this criteria, we have decided to include other models from Emotiva, Marantz, and Rotel, which only have uh, minimal feature reductions but, all f but offer considerable savings uh, over the cost of the flagship models. As Emotiva has yet to release expansion modules for the RMC1, the RMC1L and XMC1 models, which cannot be expanded, look attractive as you save $1,000 and $2,000 respectively. The XMC1 is only fully differential for the front three channels, whereas the RMC models maintain fully differential capability across all channels. The Marantz AV7706 is two years newer than the Marantz AV8805, has support for AK, and if you're willing to drop two channels from 15 to 13, saves you $2,000. Rotel continues to offer the non-Mark II variation of their flagship, which was released last year, for those who don't require Dirac uh, for $1,100 less. 
The Anthem AVM-70 was announced in 2020, so we list it as such, but the current shipping date is for January of this year. Their flagship, the AVM-90, doesn't meet the cost criteria with its $7,000 list price with upgraded circuitry and two additional channels. Monoprice is the newcomer to the AV processor market with its 2020 release, the HTP-1, and is positioned as a challenger to Emotiva as a high-value, high-quality supplier. At this point, let's jump into the feature comparison matrix. First, let's point out what all models have in common. No models are THX certified. While THX sustains certification for speakers and amplifiers, its support within AV processors is very close to disappearing altogether as they have not made any moves to position THX for the immersive experience. The great thing is that all models support the two formats we must have, Dolby Atmos and DTSX. We have indicated in the matrix that 12 and 13 channel models are not applicable for DTSX Pro support, but 16 channel models from Emotiva, Arcam, and Monoprice have yet to announce support for DTSX Pro. The best you will hear for these models is that support is planned, and for Emotiva it has been a long time coming. Oral 3D, which is low on our list, is supported only by Arcam, Marantz, and Monoprice. IMAX Enhanced and Dolby Vision support is spotty. The Marantz models are the only ones that can claim to check all these format boxes. The others can conceivably catch up with firmware releases as added support typically is not hardware dependent. And this is what makes it a little challenging to keep our database up to date because manufacturers can add support through firmware and they don't always update their website or their specification sheets. Uh, in a way, they're, they're um, really underselling themselves uh, in some cases. So we have to do some investigation to really find out what these units support. So what we're at least showing here is the worst case scenario. All models have some form of room calibration. Now we're using the term calibration versus correction as there is some debate as to whether uh, manufacturers should claim that they're correcting the room. Nevertheless, they all check this box. Emotiva, Arcam, Monoprice, Rotel, and Lexicon all lever leverage the most popular room correct calibration software, Dirac Live. Arcam and Monoprice uh, note on their website that the Dirac Live base control add-on is supported for a fee. As the Dirac website lists sp specific models that support the base control add-on, we assume that is not compatible with all direct live implementations. Arc Genesis has also been popular with reviewers, uh, and there doesn't seem to be a clear winner between Dirac and Arc Genesis. While Odyssey has not enjoyed the same level of support from reviewers as Dirac and Anthem Arc, Odyssey is the technology which IMAX uses to calibrate commercial theaters and is used by Macintosh's models up to $8,000, which suggests that Odyssey is also a very viable solution. Of the group, Yamaha's Waipao calibration receives the least amount of press and is thought to be a lower tier solution. In this table, we have noted other models within each brand that are available. In most cases, uh, the same features are supported except those identified. The most notable is the Rotel RSP 1576, 
that doesn't have the Dirac Live support that the Mark II version has. RipeWave Audio will continue this review in part two by touching upon the finer details and will make its final recommendations then. With the data reviewed in this video so far, we see a few standouts. RipeWave Audio tends to be brand loyal, but we can only take that loyalty so far. We have had our sights on the Emotiva range for the last five years, that is before release and since release. We are using the Emotiva XPA1 Gen 2 monoblocks for the front stage, which are fully differential. And we are attracted by the Air processors, which also have this capability, albeit the XMC1 only provides the front three channels that uh, as fully differential. Dirac Live support was added to the Emotiva processors last summer after a long wait. And now we're waiting for DTSX Pro support, but with no target date announced. With the announcement of the Anthem AVM70 that does have DTSX Pro support and 17 channels of processing versus 16, we can envision that model in place of the Emotiva being priced between the RMC1L and the XMC1. The mono price HTP1 may be a strong 16 channel candidate, but it falls short, short on the cosmetics, and we don't feel it is a good aesthetic match for our theater. The RCAM AV40 has um, very similar features to the HTP1, but has suitable cosmetics. The offerings from Rotel, Lexicon, and Yamaha are on the low end of the channel count and don't stand out with feature support. Aside from Lexicon, that supports both IMAX Enhance and Dolby Vision. Macintosh is likely to have a stronger story in Part 2 when we look at the finer details. If you're a fan of their classic styling and reputation, then you may already be sold. While we typically don't gravitate to Marantz for their styling, their comprehensive support for formats makes Marantz's uh, AV8805 and AV7706 worth considering. While the AV7706 also comes in at the low end of the channel count, it at least has dual independent subwoofer control. It is a 2020 model and sells for $2,499, which is only beat in price by the Rotel RSP 1576. At that price point, we may be able to justify the AV7706 um, because it addresses our immediate needs and then replace it later if we need to expand in the future. If we were to decide just based on the details provided in this first part of the series, we would select the Anthem AVM70 as the best balance option for price, features, and cosmetics, and the Marantz AV7706 as the best budget conscious model with all formats supported. If you are in the market for an AV processor, what criteria are you using? Please include in the comments section. Should we purchase for just our immediate needs or plan for future expansion? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave Audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave Audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.